Okay, we're going to look at quadratic functions and the graphs of their square roots. So in this example 2a, sketch each of the following quadratic equations and their square roots and determine the domain and range of each. So if we're given x squared minus 5, we're going to graph f of x, so this graph. Then we're going to graph the square root of it. So let's put in our scale. This grid paper doesn't have scale, but I needed sort of bigger squares so that we can see those little bumps and, and bubbles. All right, so this is a parabola shifted down five units. So one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to remember your width of a parabola, your regular width. You'd go over one, up one, because one squared is one. Over two, two squared means you'd go up four. And I need, I definitely need the graph to go above the x-axis because this is all going to disappear, right? There's no, you can't square root negative y value. So we got to go over 3, up 9. So over 3, up 9. Okay, and now I'm going to draw my curve through there. And we'll kind of extend that a little bit. Okay. So we're gonna call that y equals f of x, and we're gonna fill in our domain and range like it asks. So the domain is just x e reals like you're used to, and the range is everything above negative five. So y such that y is greater than or equal to negative five, where y is the element of real numbers. Okay, now let's look at our strategy. We're gonna square root all the y values. So we wanna make sure our invariant points are there. So our invariant points are on the x-axis or where y equals zero, so the x-intercepts. Now, the x-intercept is at two, it's a little past two. Okay, and where y equals one, so I realize they're just sort of right there. Same thing here, a little bit past negative two, and then where y equals one, so we wanna make sure we do that. So it's easier to graph them right over top. Okay, then we're gonna square root anything else. The square root of four is, 2, square root of 4 is 2. Anything below the x-axis is going to disappear because you can't square root the y values, or negative y values, rather. Okay, so when we're doing this, remember it's got a bubble in the middle and go through here. So it's going to go just slightly curved up, go through. I don't want to extend this too much. It doesn't actually curve a whole lot this way. It actually goes upwards a bit. So, I mean, it does have a curve to it. It's not straight up, but I don't want to kind of have my arrows. If you're not 100% sure how that curve's gonna go, don't put the, don't extend this too long and then have points that are way off, okay? So this is what it would look like, okay? So the prow looks like these two little root graphs. All right, let's look at the domain for each, or for this rather, we've done that one. So x such that, so the domain is gonna be everything to the left of this x-intercept and everything to the right. The problem is we can't see what that is. It's great when it lands perfectly on the grid, but that's not realistic all the time, okay? It's definitely not four, because this is where four was plotted. So how do we find that? Well, we just need to find the x-intercepts, okay? Now to find the x-intercepts, you can choose to let y equal zero in the original f of x graph or the root graph, because these are invariant points. So it's easier to use just f of x equals x squared minus five. Because that intercept, the intercept of your parabola and the x-intercept of your root graph was the same. So we're going to let y equals 0. I move 5 to the other side. I square root both sides. And x is going to equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. So this is root 5. This is negative root 5. Okay. Now, let's say you had it in your mind that you were going to use the radical equation, which would make sense because that is the technically the um, x-intercept that you're finding is for the radical, the math would be very similar. You can plug zero in for y and solve for this. So when you're solving for a radical, to clear the radical, you're gonna square both sides. So zero squared is still zero. That clears that off. And from there, the math's gonna be the same as what we just did. Okay, so you're fine either way, as long as you get the x-intercepts. Now, if you had a calculator, you could put that in your calculator and you'd see that um, square root of five, well, we can check here, it's so I know exactly, is 2.236, etc. That makes sense, because the square root of four is two. So the square root of five is a little bit more than two. Now, I like exact values, so I wouldn't even bother with a calculator, and I would say, well, every th x is less than every, um, sorry, less than negative, I'm trying to say negative, square root five, and x is greater than positive root five. 
which is approximately 2.2. So it's everything greater than root five, everything less than negative root five. Okay, range, everything greater than zero. So this was just a good one to do together because of that x-intercept, right? You may have to actually find the x-intercept, which would mean in domain. If you were finding the restriction, you'd probably, and not have the graph, your math would look like this. So you kind of get to see that opportunity too. If you're, you're given the equation, um, for example, you were given y is equal to, well, actually the equation's there. I don't know why I'm writing it twice. But if you're just given the equation and you wanted to find the restriction, then you set the radicand um, greater than or equal to zero. It's a little bit trickier with the inequality sign in there. So just find the x-intercepts and do the math that way and you'll, you'll have an easier time with it.